Welcome, Climate Viewers. My name is Jim Lee from Climate Viewer News. It's December 15th, 2015, and we got to tell you about COP21, as if we didn't see this coming. So I'm over here on Ken Caldera's Geoengineering Group, and you can see here at the top, COP21 final text, and apparently they have given the green light for carbon sequestration, but no green light for SRM, so that's a good thing. Solar radiation management, stratospheric aerosol injection, stratospheric aerosol geoengineering um, has been put on the back burner. So if they can't reduce their emissions and carbon sequestration or pulling carbon dioxide out of the air and pumping it into the ground or into the ocean, if those don't work, SRM will be a reality. That's a good thing. So everybody applaud uh, the scientific community for pulling their heads out of their rears and realizing that SRM is, in, is indeed dangerous and is not necessary at this point. However, um, does the Paris Agreement open the door to geoengineering? And they say right here, um, the uh, 1.5 degree goal almost certainly would require geoengineering, such as injecting aerosols into the stratosphere or solar mirrors. Optimistically, he says, the goal is achievable, but only with immediate rigorous emissions reductions combined with new technologies to remove CO2 from the atmosphere. Um, maybe new uh, energy technologies will be able to get us to the cuts we need quickly and cheaply enough to attain our goals, writes Farber, who is in no particular um, fan of geoengineering. Otherwise, those, if we are serious, otherwise, though, if we are serious about those temperature targets, we may end up with a with little other choice than layering some geoengineering efforts on top of aggressive emission cuts. So, you know, these guys, no matter what, they're going to say, um, you know, the situation is so dire, we have to spray chemicals over the sky. Um, sucking CO2 out, not good enough. Um, this just blows my mind, of course, <laughs> but is uh, completely understandable from their perspective because of the control that they would get with such schemes. So um, schemes like planting trees, even the CO2 um, reduction through sucking it out of the atmosphere, not as dangerous as SRM. We do not want SRM no matter what. Here's another paper. Can we achieve Paris climate goals without unproven technology? Unproven technology being geoengineering. If you look up here at the top, the actual old title, which apparently they changed it, is geoengineering necessary to meet Paris COP21 climate temperature goals? Mm. Apparently they think it is. But what they're not talking about is common sense should come before geoengineering like a tree, like plant some trees. That's a great idea. Um, you know, Lorax, very happy with the trees. Please plant a tree. We have destroyed most of the forests in the world, and that's why we're in this situation. So without more trees, um, that's going to be a problem. So this made my day. Um, the signatories to the New York Declaration on Forests represents a powerful and diverse coalition. Um, goal number one, at least half the rate of loss of natural forests globally by 2020 and strive to end natural forest loss by 2030. That's something I can get behind. <laughs> Bravo. Somebody with some brains. Um, so what does this mean? I mean, what's what's the big deal about this, uh, you know, sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere? What are they talking about here? Parties should take action to conserve and enhance as appropriate sinks and reservoirs of greenhouse gases removal by sinks um, and removals by sinks of greenhouse gases here. These are um, Greg Rao uh, is basically summing this up for the geoengineers over on Ken Caldera's forum forum. And um, I find this fascinating because it turns out that Greg Rao and Ken Caldera have a patent for sucking CO2 out of the atmosphere. It sounds like they're going to make some money. Bravo, Ken. Bravo, Greg. Um, so, th you know, at the end of the day, these guys, for all their doom saying and everything, they've got, you know, their pa their wallets are already padded. Publication date 2001. This is way back when uh, Ken Caldera was still hanging out with Edward Teller, Roderick Hyde, and Lowell Wood. The three of them, um, Teller's the guy who invented the H-bomb. And this guy's, you know, Dr. Evil. He's <laughs> quoted many times as saying some pretty sick stuff. So um, that's... Ken Caldera's buddy, and now Ken Caldera and um, and the boys are hanging out. So here's uh, Lowell Wood Jr. and uh, Roderick Hyde. Edward Teller's dead, so he can't be a part of this, but the two of them, plus Ken Caldera and 
the world's most famous patent troll, plus John Latham and Stephen Salter from the um, Silver Lining Project, they got together and said, you know what, let's make some geoengineering patents. And here you go. Secret LLC is actually Intellectual Ventures. That is B Bill Gates' company. And these are geoengineering patents. So this one's one where you stick a plug inside of a cow's nose to keep the CO2 and methane from harming the atmosphere. Brilliant treatment of ruminant exhalations. Here's a second copy of that. And you can see that, oddly enough, Bill Gates is nowhere on this one. Go figure. So you move to the next one and you see, here's Lowell Wood again, and Roderick Hyde, and Ken Caldera. System and method for underwater storage of carbon dioxide. Another CO2 sequestration patent. Looks like Ken Caldera is going to make a lot of money off this COP21 conference. Got to love it, don't you? Moving along, water alteration structure, movement, method, and system. William Gates III, Ken Caldera, Roderick Hyde, Lowell Wood, Stephen Salter, John Latham, and Nathan Mervhold, the patent troll. This one is about altering hurricanes. Now, what the crap are they doing? What are geoengineers like Ken Caldera, um, you know, and Bill Gates, William Gates, one Microsoft way, there you go. Bill Gates and them getting together to steer hurricanes. You think I'm making this stuff up, but this is all about that money. If you don't believe me, check out this version of their patent application for the same patent, and you'll see Bill Gates, Ken Caldera, Lowell Wood, John Latham, Nathan Mervhold, and what does it do? Operate storm suppression equipment. Alert at least one inter interested party as to potential damage from a storm. Provide information to at least one interested party of the cost and likelihood of reducing damage from at least one interested party. Receive at least one payment from at least one interested party. Receive a request from the interested party to provide storm protection. Payments, storm protection. So this isn't about, you know, saving the world or protecting, you know, people because it got good in their heart. No. These assholes are trying to take money from an oil company in the Gulf and say, you know what? Your oil factories are going to be hit by a hurricane. We can protect you. Now, I says to Ken Caldera, whenever you steer that hurricane away from the oil field and it hits downtown New Orleans, the poor people are going to die. Now, God didn't kill those people. You killed those people. Hurricane modification, hurricane steering should be a no-fly zone, but apparently these guys... Bill Gates, Ken Caldera, and company have no problem taking money from people who want to be protected from storms. Do any of you think you have enough money to buy Bill Gates' storm protection scheme here? I don't think so. Making it even weirder, system for facilitating cloud formation and cloud precipitation using laser beams. Ken Caldera, Roderick Hyde, Lowell Wood, Nathan Mervhold, the patent troll. And this one is assigned to Elwa LLC, also an intellectual ventures company, um, which is Bill Gates and Nathan Mervhold's patent trolling apparatus. So these guys now have a laser beam cloud making patent as well. Interesting stuff. So at the end of the day, these sick guys, it's all about the money. Um, it isn't about saving us from CO2. You see it in their patents. Um, it's pretty clear to me and anybody else who follows this stuff, especially when you come over here, hurricane hacking, the Department of Homeland Security enters the weather modification business. And it took me a while to figure this stuff out, but here's the here's the rub. So they did all the patent applications January 3rd. Um, they probably got really drunk over at Bill's house and sat around the table and came up with all these patents, I guess, because Nathan Mervhold and his patent trolls were sitting there taking notes. Said, yeah, this is great. Let's make some patents up. And then... Um, Shortly thereafter, January 30th, here's another one. Um, these are the water alteration structure ones where you see that they're altering hurricanes. Oddly enough, February, same year, Department of Homeland Security Hurricane Modification Workshop. And that's the article you're looking at right now. And um, they got together and they said, let's come up with ways that we could, you know, modify hurricanes. Um, April, same year, Weather Modification Association Conference, New Unconventional Concepts and Legal Ramifications. Um, atmospheric heating as a research tool, that's HARP, that's ionospheric heaters, that's Bernard Eastland, um, posthumously, uh, 
giving his uh, speech through another guy because uh, he died before he got there. But anyway, this guy's talking about steering hurricanes and tornadoes with microwaves from space. Reduction of hur reducing hurricane intensity using upwelling pumps. And William Cotton on engineering hurricanes. These um, three, you know, presentations were given at the weather modification conference same year, followed by another patent application. That's the heat transfer conduit. Then finally, you know, they got their patent for their water alteration structure thing. And you can see that it was assigned to in a, the Invention Science Fund 1 LLC, which is also Intellectual Ventures, um, Ken Caldera and Company, and then followed by that July, U.S. City Senate Committee and Co on Commerce, Science and Transportation Hearing, Weathering the Storm, the Need for a National Hurricane Initiative. So they took all their patents. They said, hey, man, we can protect us from another Kat Katrina um, if we go and steer these hurricanes. And I guess it didn't float because the same year um, as that, uh, NOAA says no to Department of Homeland Security hurricane modification. There was a letter written by NOAA stating um, that, you know, storm fury and all the experiments they've done in the past, um, that it wasn't a good idea and they probably should knock it off. But apparently um, Bill Gates and company got their uh, funding for that sort of thing because the hurricane aerosol microphysics program, HAMP, went on in 2010, followed by the NASA Genesis and Rapid Intensification Program, GRIP. So HAMP and GRIP, followed by all of their patent trolling and going to Congress to try to steer hurricanes. These guys are all about it. They want to make some money, guys. And you can see now the Department of Homeland Security is now steering your hurricanes. Um, real quick, what are they talking about doing? Limited scale field tests, salt seeding tests, carbon black aerosol, a.k.a. chemtrails, a.k.a. carbon black dust, a.k.a. carbon black aerosol, upper ocean cooling, which is the pumps, that's uh, Stephen Salter's Salter Sink. The ion generators. What? Nobody talks about ionization anymore. Um, other just seeding. And then monolayer films was like putting oil on the surface of the ocean to keep water from coming out of it. But anyway, this stuff's crazy. And then they got their budget here. And then it goes on to talk about all the different schemes that they have, like dumping carbon black soot dust into hurricanes. Guys. This COP21 stuff it is just opening the door for more of the same on a bigger scale globally. And, uh, you know, Ken Caldera and the boys, the guys who are pro um, promoting all this crap, they got their patents waiting to make a whole lot of money off of it. Um, please say no to these geoengineering schemes. CO2 se sequestration, I don't really have an opinion on it. You want to suck CO2 out of the air, put it in the ground as long as the ground doesn't blow up. <laughs> And you'll have to look into that to see what I'm talking about. But putting a lot of pressure in the ground could be interesting. Um, I don't really have an opinion on that. But as far as stratospheric aerosol injection, stratospheric aerosol geoengineering, or solar radiation management by spraying chemicals in the sky, that's a no-go. Ken, you can make your money off of sucking CO2 all you like. Try to spray the sky. We're all going to come see you. Love you, mean it. Guys, this geoengineering stuff needs to stop. You need to get educated. Come over to theweathereffect.com. Learn the history. If you don't know the history, you're doomed to repeat it. Um, so please go out there and read it. Um, get educated and spread this around to your friends because enough's enough. We've got to put a stop to this. When the U.S. Navy's out there saying, hey, we're going to modify the weather, the Wright-Patterson Air Force Base, we're going to modify the weather. These are military getting involved. you got these geoengineering guys who are lobbyists trying to make this stuff a reality. Um, they're out there to make money. Don't get it twisted. So for all of that, um, you got you to come over here to climatebeaver.com slash geoengineering. Just click geoengineering at the top of the page and get yourself educated really quickly because Ken Caldera happens to be the number one spokesperson for solar radiation management. He's already going to make money off of CO2 and he's going to be damned if he doesn't get this to become a reality. So please, everybody, um, spread it around, get educated because it's dangerous and we don't need any more of this jump. So with that being said, unless someone like you cares a whole awful lot, nothing's going to get better. It's not. Love you, mean it. Stay safe and Merry Christmas.